But, and we're going to use, uh, there are two ways you can do, Rep repent and believe the good news, which is what we're trying to do in Lent, right? The whole point of this time is to, to reflect more deeply on uh, the mercy of God and to turn away from sin and to believe that God's plan for us is salvation. The second is, remember you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. I have a little book that I use, it's called uh, The Bread, the Daily Bread, and uh, where I have the readings. And there was a meditation by Father Romano Guardini, who uh, lived in the last century and was a, a theologian and a spiritual writer, and he's reflecting on um, Lent, Lent, and remember you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. And he talks about the larkspur, which grows wild, that's kind of uh, strikingly purple, and then, but it has, and let me read what he says, curious, green, curiously shaped leaves fills the air with color. A passerby fix, picks the flower, loses interest in it, and throws it into the fire. And in a short moment, all that's left of that splendid show is a thin streak of gray ash. What fire does in an instant, time is always doing to everything that lives. The delicate fern, the rooted oak, butterflies, darting swallows, nimble squirrels, heavy oxen, all of them equally, sooner or later, by accident, disease, hunger, cold, all these clear-cut forms, all this flourishing life, turns to a little ash, falls into the pale, feeble, dead earth, and is less than earth, into ashes. It is the same with ourselves. We look into an open grave and shiver, a few bones, a handful of ash-gray dust. Ashes signify man's overthrow by time. Our own swift passage, ours and not someone else's, ours, mine. When at the beginning of Lent the priest takes the burnt residue of green branches of the last Palm Sunday and inscribes it on my forehead, the sign of the cross, it is to remind me of my death. Everything turns to ashes, everything whatever. This house I live in, these clothes I am wearing, my household stuff, my money, my fields, meadows, woods, the dog that follows me, the clock in the hall, this hand I'm writing with, these eyes that I read what I write, all the rest of my body, people I have loved, people I have hated or been afraid of, whatever was great in my eyes upon earth, Whatever small and contemptible, all without exception, fall back into dust. It reminds us that we have this present moment to repent. And you've chosen the better course, come from work, to think about you, what God is in relation to you. The one thing that perdures is nothing that we have right now, not this building, as he says, not the clothes we're wearing, not the glasses we wear, not the computer that we work with. What perdures is that relationship with God. And that's what you and I want to focus on. Uh, so, you've chosen a moment of grace to come. When you receive the ashes, either with remember you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. It is a liberation, in a way, because nothing can hold you except your own sin from the love of God. And when it's the war, if you receive, repent and believe the good news, believe that God has a plan for you beyond your sinfulness and beyond your brokenness. Uh, that uh, the power of God's love is as present right now, uh, transforming as it is each moment of your life. And you've chosen, you and I have chosen the better part uh, to, to come and, and to take just a moment of our day to think about the ultimate, God's love, which sustains us all.